Amber Tucaro was born on January 3rd, 1990 in Northern Alberta, Canada. She was adopted by parents Andrew and Vivian Tucaro when she was just a baby and was welcomed into a family that included four older brothers. The family originally resided in Fort Chipewan, Alberta before relocating to Fort McMurray. Growing up, Amber was described as someone who was able to make everyone around her laugh and was the center of her mother's attention. In 2010, a 20-year-old Amber gave birth to a son named Jacob. Amber's main goal was to get her own residence and give Jacob a comfortable life. However, finding a home in Fort McMurray proved to be more difficult than she expected. She had to stay at a public assistance residence called Unity House until she could be placed at an affordable apartment in the area. The transition was overwhelming for Amber and she would often ask her mother to pick her up and take her back to the family home. While at Unity House, Amber met a woman who would become one of the last people to see her alive. On August 17, 2010, the woman Amber met at Unity House came by the Takaro residence and invited Amber to fly with her from Fort McMurray to Edmonton. While the woman booked the plane tickets, Vivian, Amber's mom, shared with Amber the reservations she had regarding the spontaneous trip. Amber downplayed her mother's worries, saying she would only be gone for a couple of days. Shortly after, the two women, along with Jacob, made the trip south. In order to save money, the pair chose to book a motel room in nearby Nisku, Alberta for its cheaper hotel rates versus the rates in the province of Edmonton. They checked into the Nisku Place Motel, located near the Edmonton International Airport, with plans to travel to Edmonton later on in their trip. It was between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. on August 18, 2010, that Amber left the motel, leaving Jacob in care of her travel companion. This is the last reported time Amber was seen alive. Some sources say Amber went out to buy food and others say she was excited to visit Edmonton and decided to head there early. It was confirmed that she had been hitchhiking that evening before entering the vehicle of an unknown man. When Amber didn't return to the motel room the next day, the woman she traveled with contacted Vivian. Vivian was immediately alarmed and contacted the RCMP, which stands for Royal Canadian Mounted Police, to report her daughter missing. The response she received was unsettling as the officer told her that Amber was probably out partying and would get in touch with her soon. They also mentioned to Vivian that only after 24 hours could a missing persons report be filed. Vivian disagreed with this as she knew her daughter would have never left Jacob behind, especially with someone she barely knew. On August 28, 2010, not even two weeks after Amber's disappearance, an RCMP officer recommended the case be closed and Amber be removed from the National Missing Persons database. The decision was made after reports came in of potential sightings of Amber and alleged social media activity. It took Vivian at least a month to get her daughter re-added to the list, but it proved to be the first of many issues the family would face during the ongoing investigation. For starters, the description of the vehicle Amber was seen getting into that night was never released. Later, the family learned that the items Amber had left in the motel room had been left unprocessed for months before being destroyed without their consent. Along with wondering if any of Amber's possessions could have been saved as potential evidence, Vivian wishes the items would have been returned to her due to their sentimental value. Vivian also mentioned she wasn't interviewed by the RCMP until four months after Amber went missing. Finally, in August of 2012, two years after her disappearance, the RCMP released a one-minute portion of a 17-minute phone call Amber had had with her brother the night she disappeared. The recorded outgoing call had been made while Paul, Amber's brother, was being held at the Edmonton Redmond Center, a correctional facility. Amber more than likely wanted to visit her incarcerated brother while on her way to Edmonton. The audio clip was shared in the hopes of generating new leads, and it remains the only time in Canadian history that the RCMP has publicly released an audio recording during a homicide investigation. In the recording, Amber is heard speaking to an anonymous man whose identity has not been released and is still unknown. And the conversation is as follows. Where are we by? We're just we're heading south of uh, Beaumont, or north of Beaumont. We're heading north of Beaumont. Yo, where are we going? Just... No, this is a... Road. Are you fucking kidding me? You better not take me anywhere I don't want to go. I want to go into the city. Jeez. Yo, we're not going into the city, are we? Uh, we're going no, we're not. Absolutely. Yo, where are we going? 50th Street. 50th Street. Are you sure? Absolutely. Yo, where are we going? 50th Street. 50th Street. 50th Street. Jeez, right? Jeez. It's a problem. 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 
Investigators believe the unidentified man was driving Amber southeast along the rural roads of Lettick County instead of the intended route towards Edmonton. Upon its release, three women came forward claiming to recognize the voice on the recording, and they each identified the same man, but after being investigated by the RCMP, the man was cleared of having any involvement in the case. Vivian shared the recording on social media every day, urging people to come forward with any available information. On September 1st, 2012, a group of recreational horseback riders located a human skull on a rural property in Luddick County and immediately contacted the authorities. The area south of the motel Amber had been staying at and roughly 20 miles away from Edmonton. The discovery kickstarted a two-day ground search of the area, and while it came mere days after the release of the audio recording, the RCMP says the two aren't related. The remains were identified by the Edmonton Medical Examiner's Office via dental records as belonging to Amber Tucaro. Her cause of death was unknown. After Amber's remains were found, partial remains of four other women were located within a few kilometers of where Amber's remains were buried. This led authorities to believe Amber's murder and the murder of the four other women was the work of a serial killer. The four women were Edna Bernard, who went missing on September 22, 2002, Katie Sylvia Ballantyne, who went missing on April 28, 2003, Dolores Brower, who went missing on May 15, 2004, and Corey Odenbright, who went missing on May 9, 2004, all of whom had been hitchhiking at the time of their disappearances. On March 20, 2014, Vivian filed an official complaint with the Chair of Commission about the Luddick RCMP. In 2018, an independent federal review based on the complaint Vivian filed in 2014 found that the Luddick RCMP's investigation into Amber's disappearance was considered deficient and unsatisfactory. The 120-page report stated that the officers involved were not properly trained and many didn't adhere to RCMP policies, procedures, and guidelines. This was in regard to actions taken towards the beginning of the investigation, including the removal of Amber's name from the missing persons database and the destruction of potential evidence. The amount of time taken to interview Vivian was also deemed unreasonable and unexplained. Also, numerous officers failed to get in contact with the woman Amber had been traveling with at the time of her disappearance. Amber's family says the admission from the Federal Review has given them a sense of vindication, but they will not achieve closure until Amber's killer is found. The only noteworthy lead to report was back in January 2020 when the RCMP announced that a male had contacted the authorities in December of 2019 about a missing persons case in the area. The same man made numerous Facebook posts alleging his father was responsible for Amber's murder. The accuser lived in Utah and claimed his family had identified the male voice in the recording as belonging to his father who had been living on and off at a rural ranch in the greater Edmonton area since 2009. The RCMP are currently investigating the information to see if it is relevant to Amber's case. They have noted that the accuser has made false accusations against his father in the past, and neither the identity of the accuser nor his father has been publicly released. As of 2021, Amber's case remains unsolved. It's been more than 10 years since her disappearance and with no further leads in the investigation now than when it started. While no arrests are currently made, the unidentified man whose voice is heard in the unreleased audio recording is obviously considered a person of interest. Authorities say tips continue to be called in, but nothing concrete results from the calls. It seems as though the only plausible theory is that Amber's death is the result of a kidnapping and homicide, most likely at the hands of the man who picked her up the night she disappeared. The primary question asked by many is whether or not Amber's murderer was a potential serial killer. Given that the bodies of four other women were located near where Amber's remains were found, many feel it's likely a repeat offender in the Edmonton area targeting vulnerable women. Those with information regarding the case can contact the Alberta RCMP at 780-412-5261 or the Luddick RCMP at the number above. Tips can also be called into Project Care or submitted anonymously via Crime Stoppers at the numbers above. Amber Tukaro was just 20 years old at the time of her disappearance.